Hey, attending the Bankruptcy Institute Commission, American Bankruptcy Institute Commission today with Bob Keach, who's the co-chair of the Commission on Bankruptcy Reform. There was an interesting debate that went on today, a lot of back and forth. Tell us about this commission and how it got started. Sure. The, the ABI Commission to study the reform of Chapter 11 got started really about three years ago um, when we put together a symposium during the year that I was president of the ABI. That was at a time right after the GM and Chrysler cases. It was actually at a time, if you remember, when we were all talking about too big to fail. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was sort of at the height of the, or, you know, the height of the financial crisis. And there had been commentary building over a number of years about the potential need for Chapter 11 reform, that companies were being quickly liquidated and sold but not restructured, um, and that there were a number, had been a number of changes in the economic and other environments since 1978, which is the last major reform we had. Um, so we did a symposium. Many of the people who were involved in that, that two-day symposium in Washington have, have since become involved with the commission. Um, but the consensus that came out of that symposium was we really needed to take a ground-up look at the statute um, because just a number of the, the factors, the credit environment, et cetera, that were present in 1978 that changed. Mm -hmm. So we went from that symposium. Uh, Al Togut was also involved at the time. Uh, we got uh, the idea for doing the commission. We talked to a number of people who were major uh, figures in the insolvency world, uh, mm -hmm. and they all agreed that it was time to take a comprehensive look. If you talk to the founders, people like Rich Levin, who um, wasn't on the panel today, but normally is. Ken Klee, who was on the panel today. These are Ken Klee and Rich Levin are among the people who wrote the 1978 mm -hmm. code when they were on the Hill. Mm -hmm. um, they would tell you that at the time they wrote it, they thought it was going to have a 30 or 40 year shelf life. If you look at the history of bankruptcy reform in this country, it sort of happens every 40 years or so. So right. it was just time. And the, the factors had come to play that, to make the statute not really the tool it needed to be. So that's how it got started. A lot of things have changed since 1978. The industries are a lot different, and a lot of things going on. The financial world is a lot different than it was then. What kind of outcome are you looking for this from this uh, series of hearings? Sure. Uh, well, the, and the hearings are more only the sort of publicly visible part of what we're doing. Um, we have, there, there are 20 commissioners at the moment. Um, we also have 13 advisory committees roughly 10 people each, so you're looking at another 130, 140 people. The 150 or so people who are involved in this are among the best, brightest, most well-known people in the insolvency community, not only lawyers, but you know, bankers, financial advisors, judges, professors. Um, and so behind the scenes, those committees are meeting and they're considering topics and subtopics for potential reform. Mm -hmm. um, so all that work is happening. So that's, you know, that's the iceberg below the water. Uh, all that stuff is happening. Um, we're also conducting the field hearings to get additional information. The product of all that will be that we'll put together a report that's due to be issued in the spring of 2014 mm -hmm. that will suggest um, the framework uh, for a new bankruptcy state. And, and then you will take that to Congress and they will do whatever the... Congress wants to do with it at that point, I guess. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we can't introduce any bills. Right. So, I mean, t at that point in time, somebody will take our report. It'll be turned into legislation or draft legislation mm -hmm. um, and hopefully introduced into Congress. That's something that's obviously out of our control, and that'll have to happen with somebody else. But um, if you look also at the history, I, I made a joke at the panel today. Bank major bankruptcy reform in this country generally happens every 40 years and a year ending with eight. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it could take a long time, obviously, to get through Congress. Major reform legislation like this usually does. Uh, but if we're lucky, maybe we get 2018 and we keep the pattern you know, perfectly going. So. When you get to the end of this in 2014, what does success look like? Well, success would be a bankruptcy statute that works better to uh, restructure companies and preserve jobs and preserve value for all the stakeholders, mm -hmm. right? Um, that more equitably treats all of the stakeholders in the process, so employees, claimants, secured creditors, unsecured creditors, you know, across the board. The idea is to make sure that businesses that deserve to be saved can be saved, so that those jobs are preserved, so the values preserved for the people who invested money in those companies, and that the communities where those companies exist benefit, right? And local governments benefit because they have a tax base. Right. All the sort of original reasons why we have a bankruptcy code in the first place. We just want to make it work better. Well, it seems like there's a lot of back and forth. It's not just a one-sided presentation or or hearing. There's a lot of good debate going on, so it looks like you're going to get a lot of good information on this. Um, is there anything that you need from the public's input on this? Well, eventually, I think there'll be plenty of opportunity for public input. Um, 
I think we're, we're still very early stages. The Commission is actually receiving information and receiving the product of these advisory committees. So we're early days in sort of just gathering information. At the point in time when we actually have drafts of things, there'll be plenty of opportunity for them to be aired out in public. But right now, um, the idea is to create as open a process as we can, hear from every segment of the insolvency community and beyond business. Um, we want to hear from the creditor side, the debtor side, you know, the investor side, across the board, public policy. The idea is to, if Congress, you know, had the time uh, to conduct, con you know, as many hearings as we're going to conduct, and if they had the ability to take that kind of time, they would do this. Mm -hmm. So in many respects, we're trying to do what Congress would do if it had an unlimited time and access to the community that we do. For people that are interested in following this and, and learning more about what you're doing, they can follow this online at commission.abi.org? Yeah, go to commission.abi.org. Um, you can follow the work of the commission, and we're happy to hear from you. Well, Bob, thank you for taking the time Not to talk to us about that. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.